What's going on there folks? Good morning. It is Earthmaster here on this Friday, May 28th, 2021 to date about 9.09 a.m. with a quick update video on earthquake activity kind of ramping up around the Lake Tahoe area in Northern California. Uh, just a short time ago they had a 4.2 earthquake strike right underneath the lake Go ahead and check out some information here on the USG or on the uh, Caltech website. That's going to be this page right here. You can see the red square indicating the earthquake activity directly underneath Lake Tahoe. I've uh, been kind of watching this area for for a couple weeks now. Um, they've been having kind of like a little swarm of activity. Let's get a little bit different map here. I like I kind of like looking at that one on occasion, but it's better to see the USGS. Uh, with their fault maps up here and uh, there is definitely a lot of faults within this area of course Sierra Nevada mountains uh, built up uh, due to plate tectonics uh, let's zoom in here real quick and see that activity pretty good cluster of earthquakes taking place um, in this region right after that 4.2 I believe these are all aftershocks uh, following that 4.2 the larger quake so far but um, looking back over the last few weeks or so we've seen um, a swarm of earthquakes within this vicinity uh, Missy Mimi's uh, a moderator here on this channel did a pretty good in-depth detail of the um, the plate boundaries and whatnot up here uh, around the lake and uh, within the vicinity we just uh, it's hard to say i mean this this area does get some larger quakes it's hard and, and there's always a chance folks there's always a chance this could be leading to something bigger within the area uh last night i did notice and we still we're still seeing it a little bit today and we talked about this in the update video of increase in earthquake activity along the coastal range here not on the san andreas fault which is the dark red line but inland into some of the smaller faults secondary third fault systems up here into the north american plate showing some seismic uh, activity on the increase and you can actually see it on the map it was a nice straight uh, straight line of activity here um, showing that heightened activity and then we've seen some further movement uh, also to the north of lake tahoe kind of just a uh, mention about watching this area specifically for uh, increase in earthquake activity and sure enough uh, here we are looking at uh, a little bit larger earthquake activity here. Uh, they did have a 4.7 uh, a couple weeks ago northwest of Truckee, you remember? Um, it's right about in this area. Then we've seen a swarm of earthquake activity pick up here. Even though it's only showing one, there's there's definitely been quite a bit. I'd have to go back... Uh, I'd have to go back 30 days all magnitudes, which I think we can. There we go. Not going to... Yeah, it looks like a, let's see if we can see that 4.7 that struck in this region. Now these are, oh yeah, there we go. So you look at this map and this is a pretty, eh, pretty small area, uh, but each one of these swarms are independ independently separate. Uh, we got the activity that I believe it started here first. There's some older earthquake activity before the red, before the yellow. Uh, that had taken place even outside of that 30-day threshold that I'm now looking at. Um, so we've seen the activity there first in Lake Tahoe, then worked its way up here with a 4.7, uh, and then bounced up here to Portola. And now we're getting uh, all this movement today um, there at Lake Tahoe once again, right underneath the lake, folks. Uh, so it's hard to say exactly what's going on. Um, there's a lot of different fault structures and systems up there. I can see some of them on this map right here. Uh, I believe it's the North, the Incline Village Fault. Uh, there's another one right here, North North Tahoe Fault System. You got to remember, mountains are built up due to plate tectonics, so uh, it, it's even it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's possible it could be building to something bigger, or it could just do this little cycle of earthquake swarms throughout the area but another region region to watch is over here by Reno historically they can get some uh, well anywhere can get some larger earthquakes where you got mountains and fault systems right 
hold on one second let's check out i want to check out the details of this quake real quick here quite a few folks reported filling it i felt the 4.7 that struck um there northwest of Truckee um a couple days or uh, a couple weeks ago when it hit just a little jolt um, i did not feel this one okay so looking historically here at least back to 1900 um in the other video that Missy Mimi's did, I think she talked about uh, some other earthquake activity that was larger. I will include that as a link in the up next uh, video that YouTube will uh, provide to you at the end of this video. Um, so about 1900 to 2015 shows uh, some of the magnitudes and the areas. Uh, you know, 5.0 to 6.0 in this region is not out of the question up here folks it includes the reno area carson city um, all up around here looks capable of uh, at least historically uh, being able to produce five to six point oh magnitude quake uh, and, and possibly bigger that only goes back to 1900 that's not a long time it might seem 1900 holy smokes that was a long time ago yes for us humans but historically when it comes to the plate dynamics and whatnot yeah it's nothing it's only a little little skip of a heartbeat uh, I need to go back here I wanted to see who all felt it uh, did you feel it report if you felt this earthquake up there folks let me know it looks like it was felt back down into my neck of the woods here around Chico at least maybe a couple people um, but mostly up around Truckee Carson City Reno area uh, down into the foothills looks like maybe Placerville in all areas i'm sure in between uh just maybe nobody reported filling uh reported filling at population density of course once you go up into the higher terrain is a little bit uh, less compared down here in the valley so some light shaking it looks like <clears throat> Ta uh, Tahoe City, Glen Glenbrook, Nevada, looks like reported filling that as well. So it was felt uh, over the area, folks. Um, aftershock activity is pretty impressive with this one so far. I, you know, hopefully that's it. Hopefully that was it. Uh, you know, with the prior swarm and now a 4.2 as a main quake. But it's something to watch. We just never know. Swarms like this. Um, are interesting to watch and 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 study but then again um you know the the seismic hazard is kind of on the increase uh, for potentially a larger quake in the vicinity Cons considering that this was spread out not you know this activity we've seen over the last 30 days is spread out uh into three separate sections here portola northwest of Truckee, and lake tahoe and each of these sections have had independent earthquakes um, on different days they all haven't shown activity in the same day it's been different as uh, far as like the days go the length of um, what's the word i'm looking for you get what i'm saying they've, they've all happened on different periods of time as i mentioned lake tahoe seemed to happen first prior to this 4.2 and then we had that uh, 4.7 in Truckee. Then we had a large uptick up here. And that's calmed down a little bit. Actually, last night there was a couple earthquakes up here. But that calmed down for the most part as far as swarming goes. And then we get all this activity today in Lake Tahoe. So there's always that possibility of um, potentially seeing a, a larger magnitude quake being stirred up. But it's an obvious sign as well uh, with the seismic activity along the coastline that we could see sp strongly. Um, I wonder if we can do... Uh, this kind of shows some of it. But last night when we were looking at the map here, you could see specifically a line of earthquake activity from up here north, which is the San Andreas Fault System, but it was just east of there, running all the way down the coast range inland east of the San Andreas Fault and it ran down to about right here 
and it wasn't a solid line it was just a few earthquakes that were very noticeable uh, in seeing the the where the pressure and movement is and it's pretty much like I said about northern California inland with all the seismic increase happening into the Intermountain West Idaho ramping up um, this tells me here that we're getting a lot of strain and built up in this area of northern California again pressure movement into this area is pretty high so be on guard today when we start seeing movement up here in Idaho you got to look at the picture as a whole here not just zooming in into this area and say wow there's a lot of pressure in this area well yes there is and that's why we're getting earthquake activity but as a whole dynamically whole in this North American plate here uh, we're looking at quite a bit of uh, earthquake activity ramping up which tells me there's obviously a lot of pressure built up here in this region right now in this whole region um, kind of quiet here in the Pacific Northwest if you look at that map all magnitudes uh, there's not a whole lot going on up here uh, but that's nothing I mean that's don't let your guard down if you're in this region of the Pacific Northwest we could see uh, um, something pop off Anyway, folks, uh, we'll cover this a little bit more in detail. I'm just kind of getting my day started. Um, I know it's kind of late, but I got a late start. And we'll keep our eyes open here on that map there for uh, further increase in activity. I wanted to see exactly how many aftershocks we got going with this. So far, it looks like about 13 earthquakes total. There was a pretty good distance of time from the last earthquake uh, to this 4.2. Of course, I don't consider, you know, you could consider a swarm a bunch of four shocks, but I, I don't consider it like that. Um, earthquake swarms really don't, not 100% of the time, produce a large quake, but in this case, it's, it's looking likely that it is. Um, is this the largest earthquake that can happen in this region? No. So that's why I'm saying if we continue to see swarms, uh, be on guard for potentially larger movement uh, with this earthquake activity. I do have a seismograph station located very close to this activity. It's going to be uh, Donner Summit, which is uh, right next to I-80. There's the earthquake right there. That's the 3.1 uh, aftershock, I believe. It'll come around. I got a bunch of different seismographs that I like to monitor, but you can see all the names of these areas. Um, like this one right here is uh, Petrolia, Northwestern California. Uh, this one here is Yellowstone, Yellowstone National Park. Uh, the one down below that is going to be a station in South America called Chile. And Donner Summit sits right down here with that 3.1 uh, 3 aftershock that had struck. Unless there's something new, but that's 3.1. The last uh, earthquake on the USGS map. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to monitor that activity, that's the station to monitor. Oh, we got another one coming in now. See, this is live. This is uh, some live graphs straight from the... Uh, uh, seismograph stations. I'll show you guys here real quick once this comes around. It looks like to be about the same size as that 3.1 that just struck. Okay, here we go. Here's Donner Summit. You can see that earthquake right here specifically. About the same size as that 3.1 that had struck uh, a few minutes ago. So we'll see when the USGS pops it up on the globe. But uh, nonetheless, earthquake activity uh, continuing, folks. Okay, there we go, 2.8. Looks like I was off a little bit. <laughs> it's hard to tell with those graphs. They don't give magnitude levels, but I've been looking at these graphs for uh, quite a long time, uh, quite a few years, and the amplitudes that these things reach sometimes gives me a, a good indication of, of uh, the magnitude. But then again, it actually looks bigger. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Sometimes these get revised uh, into different levels of magnitudes, depending on when the seismologist looks at it. But all right, I'll get off here. I'll be back a little bit later to cover this in more detail, uh, unless something bigger happens.
which hopefully that's not the case, folks. We'll, t we'll chat to you a little bit later. Stay safe.